Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. This is Bucket Ponds, and my name is Terry. Today I have another look at the Detritus Worm Aquarium. That's right, Detritus Worms. We're trying to raise them intentionally here. And that's something that we have achieved great success with in the past. But with this particular tank, things have developed differently. And I'm going to jump right in so we can talk about it. So it is important to note that this tank was originally built to raise detritus worms. It is a dirty nano tank, uh, quite literally. I started it with mulm and various other things uh, designed to uh, stimulate life in here and to simulate a seasoned aquarium. Unfortunately, it hasn't worked out that well. And our detritus worms, uh, there are a few in here, but not as many as I'd hoped. Um, in the coming months, we might see a huge resurgence in them. But as it is now, we only have a few detritus worms in here, and most of them have burrowed down into the substrate, which is fine. Uh, but we do have other pets in here as well. We have, of course, some of our bladder snails. They are very hardy, and they can easily colonize a small tank like this without any issues. This is a two and a half gallon semi-hex by Aquaculture, I believe. And uh, you can, of course, raise bladder snails in this tank size perfectly fine. Uh, they do really well in anything that's about a gallon or more. But we also have planaria. Yes, flatworms. Now, a lot of people hate planaria. The first time I saw them, I freaked out. Uh, I, I captured them in a small container. I kept them isolated. I was really worried. Uh, but over time, I've come to realize that planaria are pretty harmless. And uh, other than some slight issues they can cause with your fish, I would not worry too much about planaria. Uh, but I do know for a fact that some of my planaria are descendants from Puerto Rican imports that I got from a friend. So yes, we have some Puerto Rican nationals <laughs> living in our nano aquarium as well. Uh, but that's pretty cool. Um, particularly the larger planaria are direct descendants of the Puerto Rican variety that I acquired from a vendor. Uh, but the real stars of this new nano aquarium are the ostracods. Yes, uh, they are seed shrimp. And they are tiny shrimp enclosed in a clam shell. They are very interesting little pets, and I'd like to think of them as like freshwater sea monkeys. They're very, very easy to raise, and uh, they're very interesting. They're very active. They're always darting around and swimming, and, and it, it works out to be an interesting thing to watch. Now, if you're attempting to raise ostracods for your first uh, steps into this hobby, I would suggest um, to avoid the idea of a clean culture. It is very difficult to run any kind of clean, single-species monoculture. It's, it can be done, but it's not easy. In my experience, setting up a pond in a jar is a much easier method for raising ostracods. They are very forgiving. If you're running a natural ostracod culture, I would suggest that you avoid air pumps or water pumps. Anything like that, you don't need it. Um, the ostracods do very well in still water with uh, you know, plenty of filtration from plants. Um, the ostracods themselves are a lot of fun to watch, and my fish will uh, actively hunt and chase and consume them when I take samples and add them to my aquariums. So the main goal of this tank was to raise detritus worms to use as fish food for my new guppy tank. Uh, unfortunately, the detritus worms did not work out too well, but the ostracods have, and that's fine. We're way, I will gladly use some ostracods as live foods for my fish without any issues at all. And on the off chance that the ostracods, you know, escape their predators and they end up colonizing the fish tank, that won't hurt anything either. That's fine. That's just more food for the fish to hunt down later. In this particular tank, I was severely disappointed at first that our detritus worms did not make the strong foothold, that they didn't grow into the huge population like I wanted. But instead we have a beautiful, you know, nano aquarium, nano ecosystem that has developed all on its own into a beautiful, unique setup. So I'm not going to worry too much about these uh, failures <laughs> in this tank. Uh, and I will probably not cover this video series any further. YouTube doesn't do too well with uh, episodic content. You know, part one, part two, part three. Um, they don't do too well, at least not on my channel. So I'll probably just put this tank in the background and save it for other interesting events and for harvesting. With a tank like this, I can harvest bladder snails for use in other projects. I can take uh, ostracods and feed my fish. I can trim up some Nutella and use it in other jar aquariums. And of course, the duckweed on top. 
Duckweed's very fun to play with as it's so easy to grow. <laughs> if you're having trouble with your duckweed, I would suggest removing any kind of pump or filtration and allowing it to just sit still. In my experience with strong currents and lots of movement in the water, the duckweed will suffer. But in a tank like this that is primarily still water, like a, like a pond, you know, a small pond somewhere, a vernal pool, uh, the duckweed will do really well just sitting still. And uh, the snails and other pets, as they move around, they will agitate the duckweed a bit, causing it to split and grow more duckweed. So I'm probably rambling a bit in this video, but mainly I just wanted to retire this video series and show you that the tank is flourishing in its own way, uh, but we were not successful in raising detritus worms in this nano aquarium. If they do make a big resurgence eventually, I will cover it in a future video. Uh, otherwise, you can just imagine this as one of my harvestable uh, nano aquariums, where we're growing various things to add to other projects in the future. If you're running your own live cultures, if you're trying to raise up certain populations of different pets and you're not having success, don't let that discourage you. Just take it as a, as what not to do <laughs> and learn from it. Always learn and grow with every project that you do. So a big thank you to my 400 subscribers. You guys are awesome. Uh, I hope that you're just the beginnings of our huge club that we're forming, this new community built around ponds and ecospheres and uh, nano aquariums and all these fun things that we like to do here, these nano ecosystems that we put together. Um, I hope that I've helped you in some way and I hope that you enjoy the content. So this is Bucket Ponds, my name's Terry and I'm going to go ahead and get off of here. This is the last video for our detritus worm nano culture.